Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Alright, so I'm here with my Samsung washing machine and dryer setup. So I'm gonna show you guys how to go from this to this. Check it out. All right, so a little bit of a backstory really quick. So this setup that I have here, which is made by Samsung, I've had for probably about close to 15 years now. And in the past couple of years, it started making a lot of noise and the washing machine would literally walk itself up. And I have my door right here for the laundry room. We would normally close it just because it was so loud and would rock the house. I would try to open it sometimes and this washing machine would be probably a good foot out because it was moving so much and even the uh, drawer for all of the fabric softener and bleach and detergents would open because it was shaking just so violently. So my wife and I, our initial thought was to just replace the washing machine and let's be honest, you can't just replace one and like have it mismatched. You gotta have the whole set. So we're looking at probably a good 3,000 to 4,000 dollars in cost. And other than that, other than it being shaky, this system was working just fine. The dryer has zero issues. The only issue with, we had with the washing machine was that it was shaking so much. So right away I went on to Google and I tried to find out what the solution might be to fix that. I initially tried to replace all four shock absorbers and that of course is not the issue. The issue is what's called the spider arm. And that is way back here inside the actual drum of the washing machine. Now as you spin this, there's a motor on the back and then you have the spider arm that connects the actual drum to that motor. So over time, what can happen is that spider arm, which is typically composed of three arms, typically one of those arms will crack and either break off completely or just be completely off balance. So as you spin this, you will see it actually being completely off balance. So no matter how good your shock absorbers are, that's just gonna keep wobbling more and more and more. And as you use your washing machine more, that one single arm that's cracked will eventually snap off, uh, basically destroying the entire uh, components in the back. So if you're having the same issue that I was having, I would say your first bet is to rotate this by hand. And if you have a wobble as you rotate this, you know for sure that it's gonna be your spider arm. Now, if it's completely solid, as you can see here, like mine is, as you spin it, you might be possibly dealing with a faulty balance ring or possibly shock absorbers. So that might be a good step to try if you're having that type of scenario. So in most cases, you'll probably see a wobble as you rotate your drum manually. In that case, definitely watch the rest of this video and follow these steps. All right, so first off, the parts that I purchased, uh, it composed of the spider arm, uh, the bolts, which came included in the package. And then I also replaced the rubber gasket that goes in the center of the container. You're definitely gonna to wanna to replace that because if you don't, you can be dealing with some leakage and uh, you don't wanna to happen to have that. So go ahead and replace that as well. And while I had the entire thing opened, I actually wanted to replace the bearings as well. So it comes in a uh, pack, which I will link in the description below. Uh, there's a front bearing and then a rear bearing. One's larger than the other one. And then I also installed a new gasket for those bearings as well to keep everything watertight. All right, so the procedure is a little bit intense, but not difficult, if that makes sense. There's a lot of little steps. I would say the most difficult thing for me was removing the entire assembly out of the washing machine housing because it's just heavy and there's not really like a good leverage point to lift it up and out. Um, but I will say that I did complete this project by myself. If you're solo and you have no one to help you, you can still do it. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult. I would definitely suggest getting a second person to at least help you remove the actual unit out from the housing. All right, so to complete this project, you're just gonna need a couple tools. I recommend a Phillips screwdriver, flathead, a ratchet set, and then I do recommend you use some type of drill or power screwdriver to make things a lot quicker and save your strength for lifting this thing out because it's gonna take all your energy to get that done. And there is also one difficult bolt on the motor assembly that attaches the actual unit to the motor. 
I recommend you use an impact gun for that because there's not a whole lot of leverage back there. I even tried to use a breaker bar and it was still kind of difficult. So after I used my impact gun, that bolt came out quite easily. So before you guys start, I recommend you guys unplug the unit from the socket and then also pull it out from the wall a little bit. Now you will have to pull out that drainage hose from your drain ever so slightly, but just to give you enough room to work on the back of the unit. Now I have mine on pedestals, so it gave me a little bit less leverage. If you have no pedestals and they are lower, it's actually going to work to your advantage because you have more leverage to lean over and just pull everything out. All right, so to start things off, you're going to want to just take the top off of the washing machine. There's two bolts in the back. After you move those two bolts, this top slides right off and you can access everything on the internal side. Now on the back side, there is a single panel that's bolted in with two screws that you can remove to give you access to all of the internal connections on the back. And then from there, you're going to want to move the front panel here. Just go ahead and remove the tray from the front here. There's a little tab that you push down and this will slide right out, just like so. You can remove that. After that, there's gonna be a set of uh, screws up here on the top, and then you can remove this front electronical panel. And then remove the electronic connections on the right side. There's just some couple push tabs, and that will slide right out, and you can remove this assembly. And then after you do that, you're gonna to wanna to remove this rubber piece here. There's a little spring-loaded clip on the bottom edge. Uh, you get to move with that and then another one on the internal side. Uh, after you move both of those, this will pop off. And then it's just a matter of removing a lot of screws. There's going to be a couple here on the top. You're going to want to remove this one here and then the two here for the door latch. And then there's going to be two on the bottom. And then after that, you just lift it up and then pivot it out. There's going to be two hooks on the bottom there. And then this front entire door panel will pop off. There's a little bit of a connection here that you do need to remove for the electronics. And then the front door and the entire front will be exposed. I actually removed the entire top bracing here just to give myself a little bit more room to remove everything. Uh, that's optional, but definitely recommend that. It made things a lot easier. All right, so once you're inside the machine, it's just a matter of removing all of the hoses. There's a main drainage hose on the bottom, and then there's also an air vent hose on the top right side. And then there's a couple of uh, smaller hoses and then a lot of electronic components that you do need to remove. I'll show you that right now. So after you get all those removed, Go ahead and remove the four shock absorbers on the bottom. There's one on each corner. Out of the way. All right, so this is the little lightweight Black & Decker lithium battery powered drill that I use around my home. As you can see here, it has a standard drill chuck. And then I also have the impact attachment to that. That's just gonna help to easily remove a lot of these uh, larger bolts and things like that. All right, so with this, you could just basically push this top in here. This slides out. Again, here's my impact gun attachment. Slides on just like that. Careful not to pinch your fingers there. Snaps right in place. And then I also have this drill bit attachment that attaches ratchets on here as well. So there you go. So then after you do that, there are a set of weights. There's three weights in total on this particular model here. There's two on front and then there's one on the rear. I recommend you remove those. Now it is optional. But again, if you're doing this by yourself, you're gonna to wanna to remove as much weight as you can to lift this up and out of the unit. So I recommend you do that. There's gonna be two bolts on each of those three weights. And then after all hoses, all electronic connections and the shock absorbers are removed. So there's gonna be two springs that carry the actual unit inside the housing. There's gonna be one on the left and one on the right. You're gonna to wanna to use your arm here, lift it up, and remove each of those on the left and the right side. You can lift this up and out of the housing. There's gonna be a lot of Phillips head screws all the way around the entire plastic housing. Again, use a power drill for that because that's gonna save your arms and all your strength. Go and remove all those and then the two halves will just basically come apart. All right, so before I take this apart, go ahead and pay attention to this gap right here as I spin this. So you can see just how close it gets here and it starts to get further apart. So that's due to a broken spider arm. 
there's either going to be one or two of the arms that are going to be snapped, causing that imbalance. And no matter how good your shocks are or your springs or anything that you do, you're not going to be able to fix that shaking of the washing machine until you change out that spider arm. Now on the back of the unit is that difficult bolt that I was talking about. Definitely, definitely recommend you use an impact gun for that because it is quite difficult to remove by hand. So once you remove that bolt, the entire motor will just pull straight back and out. Now I recommend you get a bucket to set the entire unit on top. Now I just used two plastic buckets on the left and the right just to set it on the floor and then keep it balanced from tipping over. Now in my opinion, the spider arm design is just faulty like throughout, like from the get-go. It's just made of the wrong type of metal that doesn't really last, especially like in hard water usage and you're putting bleach and detergents and things like that, it just doesn't last, it cracks. So it's kind of an inevitable thing to deal with, but luckily there's a lot of parts online and then tutorials just like this one that'll help you solve that issue. All right, so at this point, you should be able to identify where that breakages on the spider arm. In my case, I had to look really closely and I found all the cracks in one of the arms. And then the removal process is pretty straightforward. There's basically two bolts on each arm. So two, four, six total. Uh, these can be quite difficult to remove. And in my case, I've snapped two of them just because the removal was so difficult. But again, use a ratchet, use a power drill if you can. And then all six of those will come out. After that, you can pull the unit straight out and then clean all of the mildew and deposits. I recommend picking up a plastic putty knife to scrape off all of that excess. You definitely don't want to mar that surface too much, so plastic is the way to go. So after you get everything cleaned up, you're going to want to make sure to strain out the metal. Now when you attach the spider arm with the bolts, it actually deforms the metal on purpose to give it a nice tight fit and keep it balanced and aligned. So once you remove it, you're going to tap those back out. Uh, I just use a small hammer. You can also use a ballpoint hammer as well and just get those nice and flush with the rest of the metal. That way the installation of the new part is going to go smoothly. So after you get everything strained out, all the metal's cleared up and it's clean, go ahead and install the new part. So drop it straight down and use the six bolts to bolt the new spider arm to the drum. All right, so at this point, the spider arm's all installed. Go ahead and go back to the plastic part, remove the old gasket, and install the new gasket as shown. Now these gaskets are built specifically for the size, so you're not gonna wanna stretch it out. You're gonna wanna make sure to put it in evenly and just let it lay naturally. Okay, so at this point, if you are replacing your bearings, follow these steps. So you're gonna wanna pop off that gasket that's on the front of the unit. And then once that gasket is removed, it's gonna expose your bearing. So again, by placing the housing onto a bucket or on two pieces left and right, you can go in with a long piece of metal in my case, I just used an extension rod and then go in through the top bearing and tap out the bottom bearing. And you're gonna do that gradually on all sides just to make sure not to ovalize that hole. So do that for the bottom bearing, flip it over and then do it for the top bearing as well. Once both bearings are removed, go ahead and install your new bearings as shown. After the bearings are fully seated, go ahead and flip the unit back over and install the new gasket. You're going to want to push the gasket in gradually on all sides to make sure not to ovalize the housing. Alright, so after everything's installed, you're going to want to reassemble everything in reverse order. So by taking the metal drum with the new spider arm, go ahead and seat it back down into the plastic housing and through the bearings. Take the other half of the plastic housing and seat it right on top, making sure things are aligned. You're going to go ahead and reinstall all of the bolts. Now that the entire plastic housing is reassembled, flip it back over and reinstall the motor with the single bolt.
Get your two springs ready and reinstall the springs and hook them back into the housing. This should hold up the drum while you get everything ready for reinstallation. Now I recommend you start with the shock absorbers that'll help to hold everything in place while you reinstall all of the other components. So at this point, all of the hard work is done and now you're ready to reconnect everything. There's no real particular order in this, but just go ahead and follow my steps. Now you can go ahead and reinstall all of the hoses on top and the bottom, and then make sure to reinstall all of the clips. After all hoses are connected, you're now ready to reinstall your electronic components by connecting the connectors, and just make sure they are seated fully. Now you're ready to reinstall the weights by attaching the two bolts for each weight. Now I recommend just doing one thorough check just to make sure everything's connected, all hoses, all electronic components, and all weights are tightly fitted and tightly secured. You definitely don't want to have anything loose and pop off during a wash. Okay, so after everything's connected, you're ready to reinstall all of your front paneling, all of your electronic components, and then the top portion. Go ahead and seat the front door on the two tabs on the base of the unit, and then pivot it back while making sure to realign your door closure component. Connect that electronic component and then push the front panel back towards the main housing until it makes that click so that it holds it in place. Now with the other hand, go ahead and fish the door panel component and making sure everything is aligned. Reinstall the three screws and then you're ready to bolt on the front panel by attaching all screws on the top and the two screws on the bottom. After the front door panel is tightly secured, go ahead and reinstall the rubber gasket here. Realign it into the channel and then take the spring loaded ring and install it all the way around until it makes a click. After after that's all installed, go ahead and reattach your control panel and that pivots from the bottom inward to the top and then reattach all of the screws as shown. Now you can go ahead and slide your detergent drawer back in and reinstall the top part of the housing. So now that everything on the front is done, everything on the top is done, go ahead and move to the back of the unit, reinstall the plate with two screws and then reinstall the top of the housing with two screws as well. At this point you're ready to slide back your washing machine back into position and realign all the tubes and then go ahead and plug the unit back in. So I recommend doing a test run before everything's attached. You can even leave the top panel open just to eyeball it and make sure you have no leaks. So what I did is actually I ran a cleaning cycle and I threw in two tablets. I'll go ahead and link what I use in the description below. Go ahead and check those out. But I ran the full cycle on hot and I made sure to eyeball everything from the top opening. I ran the full cycle and also double checked for leaks. There was zero leaks, zero issues and I was running very smoothly. So I went ahead and I reattached the top panel and everything was good to go. All right, so at this point, go ahead and give the drum a quick spin by hand and just make sure that there's no wobble and that you've solved your issue. All right, and if you follow my steps, you should be dealing with a silent washing machine. Again, I went from this. To this. Now it's been about a month since I've done that fix and this has been working flawlessly. It literally feels like it's brand new like the day I purchased it and brought it home and ran that first wash. It's just overall very quiet, very silent. Any type of imbalance that does happen, say if I'm washing like a lot of towels, the unit will slow it down and rebalance it automatically as the unit has vibration reduction technology built right into it. It can automatically rebalance it should that ever happen. And then after that does that, Everything is just good to go. It's just silent, smooth. There's no shakiness whatsoever. All right, guys, so that's gonna sum up my video for the day. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around to the very end of this video. If you're not already, please consider hitting that subscribe button, like, comment as usual, and also if you're looking to purchase any of the components or the tools that I'm showing you in this video, please use my affiliate links in the description below. Other than that, hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.